Hello and welcome back to Cost Management. This week we'll be looking at period cost application. Topic 1. What's the purpose of cost applications? When looking at why we are allocating these period costs, let's look, take a look. Most costing relies on tracing, which is the process of identifying a cost and tracing it back to a specific product. Tracing is not always financially feasible as it requires a significant input of time and accounting labor. In lieu of tracing, allocation systems are used. Allocation systems in their most basic form are a method of accumulating costs, in this case period costs, that cannot be conveniently traced back to a product and then spreading or allocating them across business units or functions. The application of period costs are for internal management purposes and are not meant to be GAAP compliant. Because they are for internal purposes, unlike figures used for financial reporting purposes, there are no you know, strict rules, regulations, standards, etc. that instruct accounting functions how to allocate costs. Methods for allocating vary in terms of their complexity and thus time and cost to implement. As with other forms of costing, for example, activity-based versus single predetermined overhead rates, the key factors in determining which systems to use are how accurate the ultimate cost allocations need to be and how costly and time-consuming of a costing exercise the company can afford. There are several primary benefits of performing the careful costing of products. The more accurate full product pricing is, the more accurately a company can set the price in a competitive market, helping to protect the market share of the company overall. It also improves the accuracy of the budgeting process that can be used to make decisions. For example, whether or not to continue offering a particular product or service. It can also allow for a more accurate variance analysis to be conducted, which can help in identifying root causes of variances. It can also help management to select a profitable path for the company, which is especially important for firms operating with constrained resources. The purpose. Along with the benefits of the allocation I just discussed, there are some primary purposes that should be noted. Number one, providing information for economic decisions. And further, number two, to provide incentives or motivation of motivation to members of management or other staff, i.e. bonuses. Number three, to justify costs for reimbursement, either from within the company or from an external source of funds. Time for a question. You work as a corporate accountant for a large food manufacturing company. Your manager, the director of corporate accounting, approaches you. They tell you that they are attempting to build a case for a more complex method of cost allocation. The company has recently been experiencing issues with managers complaining that they feel unfairly treated as cost inputs are used in the calculation of their annual bonuses. Which argument is likely to be the most persuasive in convincing management to adopt a new system of cost allocation? Is it A, the new system can assist in making economic decisions? B, the new system can assist in providing incentives to managers. C, the new system can assist in fundraising externally. Or D, the new system will improve financial reporting processes. If you said B, the new system can assist in providing incentives to managers, that would be correct. The company's managers at present feel as though they're being treated unfairly and as a result are not responding to incentives in the way the company's executives would like. The new costing system can help reallocate costs in a more accurate and fair fashion, and if something is accurate and fair, this could help re-incentivize managers as they would feel a direct tie to their efforts in and the metrics used to, um, to evaluate those that performance. Alrighty, good work guys. Uh, we're off to a great start. I will see you in the next video.